The recent bankruptcy at Sears Canada threw a spotlight on the lack of protection for pensions when an employer goes belly up. In the case of Sears, which had an underfunded pension, the future of its workers' pensions was thrown into limbo as well. And a new report today highlights an interesting trend among Canada's biggest publicly traded companies. It paid out four times more to shareholders than it would have cost to fully fund its defined benefit pension plans. The research is from the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives. David McDonald is their senior economist, and he joins us from Ottawa. David, is, is the Sears story just a cautionary tale for us all here? Well, it is a cautionary tale, and what's interesting is that it's not particularly unique. Uh, so among the S&P TSX 60, the 60 biggest companies in Canada, 39 of them maintain a, a defined benefit plan of some kind. Uh, a third of those have a fully funded plan, but two-thirds do not have a fully funded plan. Uh, and most of those, almost all of them, in fact, that don't have a fully funded plan could make that plan fully funded uh, if they used a portion of, of shareholder payouts, uh, but they choose year over year not to. Uh, and what's interesting is that the regulators, uh, provincial regulators, can't distinguish. Uh, they don't have the tools to distinguish between companies that need extra time to pay back a pension shortfall and those that don't. Well, I don't, I've, I've heard that argument before, and I've never understood it. We, we heard it when Sears happened, and politicians were saying, look, this stuff's really complicated. Figuring out a dividend is incredibly complicated, too, and yet we can pay that out on a monthly basis. Why is this so complicated? Is this just straight up and down a choice that, they, that the, you know, the shareholders matter more to the bottom line than the pensioners and the workers do? Well, certainly from the company's perspective, that's right. Uh, the company can choose to fully make up their plan or they can meet the minimum regulatory requirements as set out by, say, the government of Ontario. Um, the real issue, I think, is with regulators that set out a standardized schedule uh, if you fall into a particularly large pension deficit. But that schedule is applied carte blanche to all companies. So there's no difference between a company that's highly profitable and paying out dividends and buying back shares and a company that isn't. Uh, and so the argument that the report makes is that clearly most of these big companies could be making up their pension shortfalls extremely rapidly if they wanted to. But the regulators don't have the ability to force them to do that. And is that just a simple question of the shareholders have better lawyers than the pensioners do? Well, I, well, certainly uh, it, uh, it, it needs to be a provincial regulation that's set and, and, and uh, becomes a part of the negotiation with these companies. Um, but I think what's clear is that when you've got, you know, 93% of these companies that have a shortfall could make up that shortfall with under two years worth of shareholder repayments, clearly these deficits are a choice from the company. There's no necessity in them existing. Uh, and the, the real challenge is that particularly on the pensions file, we need to be proactive. Sears is definitely a cautionary tale. Once you become insolvent, despite the fact that you paid out five times more in dividends than you would have needed to make up your pension shortfall, which was the case in Sears, uh, then you end up in the reactive stage where pensioners, just like everyone else, fight it out in bankruptcy court to try to see how much their, their pensions will be reduced. And, and once we've established that it is a choice, and I think the report does a very good job of, of making that case, you then get to a series of recommendations. You've touched on some of them, but, but what, what do we need to do from a policy perspective to, to try to turn this on its head a little bit? Yeah, I think the minimum that we should be doing is saying to companies that, that have shortfalls that they have a mandatory disclosure requirement. So if they want to pay out an extraordinary dividend or have a share buyback, they have to inform the regulator that they're doing that. That's not necessarily going to stop them from doing that, um, but I think it's a necessary first step, and it follows uh, rules that are actually already in place in the U.S. I think a further step that we need to take is to allow the regulators the flexibility to say to companies, look, if you're paying out four times more to shareholders than uh, the total value of your pension deficit, seems like we can probably shorten the time frame in which you need to pay back that deficit with the hope that we won't end up in the Sears situation, that if companies, big companies, do go insolvent, uh, their pension plans will have enough assets to cover the pensioners, uh, and it'll be shareholders and not workers that are holding the bag at the end of the day. Indeed. All really good points, and it's a great report. We'll, uh, we'll put it up on the Twitter feed. David, thank you for this. Thanks for having me. David McDonald, a senior economist with the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives.